Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Priscilla Coleman. I'm not sure what I have to do to get this. Okay. Great. Just want to test it for a second. To, oh, to advance. What's that? Oh, okay. Okay. All right, can I get rid of that? All right. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, and I am going to be talking about the psychological problems associated with abortion from the peer-reviewed literature. And like Monique, I love data, but I also like pretty pictures, so I <laughs> try to make it a little interesting that way. Um, the two general areas that I'll address are what are the characteristics and situations that put women at most risk for mental health problems, following abortion, and then I'll also look at some of the common negative post-abortion mental health problems from the literature. Um, I just conducted a search uh, of all the academic literature looking at articles published between 1972 and 2011, and that yielded over 100 studies related to demographic, personal, relational, and situational factors that increase risk for post-abortion mental health problems. Uh, so what are these factors that seem to be most prevalent in the literature? We're going to review them briefly. And this information was really helpful recently in my work with South Dakota uh, with their newer bill. Um, so that was the impetus for doing this extensive study, but now we have this information that can be shared widely. Um, if the one, pregnant woman is pressured or coerced by others to abort, nine studies document this risk factor. If she's religious or views an abortion to be in conflict with her personal values, 10 studies. The pregnant woman was ambivalent about the abortion, experienced decision difficulty, and or had a high degree of decisional distress. 21 studies document that risk factor. If she was committed to the pregnancy or she preferred to carry the child to term, seven studies. Belief that abortion terminates the life of a human being and or the woman experienced some bonding to the fetus, six studies. And it's interesting because the data indicate that about 50% of women who undergo an abortion actually believe that, that they are terminating a human life. But often psychologically it becomes a situation where they feel like it's my life versus this child's life. And so it's almost like a, a self-defense reaction. Also, you may not think that women would bond to a fetus that they're planning to abort, but there are some studies out of Australia that have shown that very early bonding does occur with many women. Um, if she had pre-abortion mental health or psychiatric problems, 31 studies. The other side is always eager to say that it's, it is only these women who have prior psych histories who are vulnerable and most likely to be you know, harmed or upset after an abortion, but the newer studies that are out there, and I will talk about the strengths of the newer studies, many of them we've controlled, people, other researchers have controlled for prior psych history. So uh, although these are vulnerable women and they certainly need care, we have to realize that it's not just the psychologically vulnerable women who have pre-existing issues who are uh, harmed by abortion. If the pregnant woman was an adolescent or a young adult, 15 studies, oftentimes here it's not the person's own decision, it's a boyfriend, it's a parent, it's someone else. Um, she was in a conflicted, unsupportive relationship with the father of the child, 24 studies. The pregnant woman experienced negative relationships with other people in her life, 28 studies. If she had character traits suggesting emotional immaturity, instability, or difficulties coping, 42 studies, um, indicators of poor quality abortion care, so if the woman reported feeling misinformed or, or had inadequate counseling, negative perceptions of the staff, et cetera, 10 studies. Even abortion, I don't like to quote abortion providers, but um, even several abortion doctors agree on these risk factors. Back in 1995, eight, almost 18 years ago, Baker stated, in the cases where women do react negatively after an abortion, there appear to be predisposing factors linked to those reactions. There's enough valid research from which we can attempt to assess a client's potential for negative reactions after abortion. 
and she stated that um, there are these factors that are predisposing, belief that abortion is murder, low self-esteem, ambivalence about the decision, intense guilt and shame about the procedure, perceived coercion and commitment to the pregnancy. Even the American Psychological Association has acknowledged risk factors in the 2008 Task Force report, which I could talk to you for five hours about how problematic it was, but they at least um, acknowledge these risk factors. You can't deny them. The literature is just that strong. If the pregnancy is wanted or meaningful, if there's pressure from others, opposition to the abortion from partners, lack of social support, commitment to pregnancy, ambivalence, and low perceived ability to cope. So despite the availability of strong research documenting risk factors and professional awareness, abortion providers rarely, if ever, routinely screen for, for risk factors and counsel women at risk. So that's kind of the risk factor area. And then looking at psychological consequences, there is an, an abundant literature comprised of methodologically sophisticated studies from around the world that now indicates abortion significantly increases risk for the following mental health problems, depression, anxiety, substance abuse, suicidal thoughts and behavior. And there are other outcomes that haven't been as extensively studied like sleep disturbances, um, uh, eating disorders, and some other problems as well. Um, a minimum of 20% of women who abort suffer serious, prolonged negative psychological consequences. Abortion is further associated with a higher risk for negative psychological outcomes when compared to unintended pregnancy carried to term. There are at least eight studies that have used unintended pregnancy um, as the comparison group. And the data indicate the risk for long-term psychological injury is considerably higher with abortion than with other forms of perinatal loss. So there are many strengths to the newer literature. Back in the 80s and 90s, we really didn't have a strong literature base, but we certainly do now. And the studies that are out there have larger samples, many that are nationally representative, controls for prior psychological history, and controls for personal and situational variables that are associated with the choice to abort. Uh, we also now have long-term data collection with low dropout rates use of appropriate comparison groups and comprehensive measures of mental health, often with actual diagnostic codes that were assigned by professionals. The strongest studies published between 1995 and 2009 are synthesized in my recent meta-analysis that was published a little over a year ago in the British Journal of Psychiatry. Uh, just a little primer on what is a meta-analysis, by systematically combining the numerical results from many high-quality studies addressing the same basic question, and, it, and in this case the question is, is there an association between abortion and mental health? This yields very reliable results, studies are weighted statistically, and meta-analysis offers a logical, more objective alternative to traditional reviews. The other side has not produced their own meta-analysis. Um, they do narrative reviews that are subject to a great deal of bias. So um, within my meta-analysis, I had strict criteria for which studies to include. I only included the larger studies with at least 100 participants, where there was use of comparison groups, no abortion, pregnancy delivered, or unintended pregnancy delivered, one or more mental health outcome variables um, in that set that I mentioned briefly before, um, because they have to have sufficient number of studies to put them into the meta-analysis, and then controls for variables associated with the choice to abort. The first meta-analysis, which yielded which included 36 adjusted odds ratios from the 22 studies that met criteria yielded a pooled odds ratio of 1.81. So what does that mean? That means that women who have had an abortion experience an 81% higher risk for mental health problems of various forms compared to women who have not had an abortion. And here is the, um, just one of the graphs from the meta-analysis, and I realize you can't see it from there very well, but you can see the pattern of data. Um, the, if, if abortion were not having an, a systematic impact on mental health, all of those horizontal lines um, would be centered around the middle vertical line, but instead they're shifted to that right quadrant, and that indicates a pattern of data um, beyond um, you know, what you would expect if there wasn't any difference. So just glancing at that, you can see something is happening. 
Uh, a second meta-analysis was conducted with separate effects based on the type of outcome measure. And so looking at those, I found the level of increased risk associated with abortion varies from 34 percent to 230 percent, depending on the nature of the outcome. In a third meta-analysis, separate pooled odds ratios were produced based on the type of comparison group. And then here, even when the comparison group was unintended pregnancy carried to term, there was a 55% increased risk. So it ranged from 55% to 138%, depending on um, the type of comparison group. And then looking at population attributable risk uh, statistics from the, that are derived from the pooled odds ratios, we were able to definitively say that 10% of the incidence of mental health problems was directly attributable to abortion. Um, and then I uh, just want to mention some key points. So the recent narrative review published by UNC Chapel Hill researcher and clinician Dr. John Thorpe, um, these were some of his conclusions related to mental health. He covered, I really encourage you to read this, it's um, just published and it really covers the gamut of physical and psychological problems. But in the psychological mental health area, he said that findings are mixed and subject to methodological shortcomings. Numerous studies from the vast literature do indicate harm associated with abortion, and he references over 100 studies in his review that are in the mental health area. Um, he has over 300 references in that article. It was pretty impressive. Um, and then he also said the 10% PAR from the Kalman meta-analysis underscores the need for continued research attention as women who abort experience, quote, a disproportionate share of mental health problems. Um, there are studies with different conclusions, beginning with the APA report in 2008. Um, there have been several narrative reviews on abortion and mental health, suggesting that abortion is generally not associated with adverse mental health consequences. Um, and I see that I don't have much, any time or much time. Um, I have reviewed several of the existing studies, empirical studies and reviews, and they're available um, at the website for a new nonprofit that I recently founded, um, and Dr. Shiro is part one of our affiliates. We have 10 MDs and PhDs from around the world. Our goal is to disseminate information and to foster more effective collaboration. So I have critiqued the, the APA review up there, and the, um, I was going to talk about the Royal College um, review, which the timing of it was very interesting, came out right um, soon after the meta-analysis, and the conclusions were very different from the meta-analysis, and I was going to point out here how terribly flawed it was. Just, I'll make one, um, talk about one slide here. Um, they had a, a ridiculously unjustified dismissal of studies, and this report was like 250 pages, and people just were not weeding through the details, but it was blatantly biased, craftier than the APA report. Um, 35 studies, most identifying mental health risks, were eliminated based on what they called no usable data. Well, what does that mean? They never told us what that meant. Fewer than 90 days follow-up. Well, well, the problem with that, if you eliminate the studies that um, you know, have early follow-up, you're eliminating the most serious cases. Um, so, the, you know, that, that's, there are many problems with the review. Um, and I would just like to conclude here um, and share Stacy Zally's story if you don't like take me out of here with a hook but I, I, I do really feel like this is important because okay <laughs> um, so I was uh, served as an expert in this case um, and so I have a lot of information about Stacy and her family. Um, at age 20, as a result of pressure from her boyfriend, Stacy underwent an abortion. Shortly afterwards, she asked for psychiatric help, but she ended therapy after only three months. Sadly, after several suicide attempts, she hung herself in her room. Her parents didn't know about the abortion and after her, until after her death. In her suicide note, she expressed desire to be reunited with her baby, who she had named uh, Brittany Lee. And her father, um, George Zally, who owns eight grocery stores, but since Stacy passed away, has really not focused on the businesses at all and is, um, has founded this nonprofit. Um, he is not um, personally pro-life or pro-choice, pro-information, and he's done a lot to help the cause. Um, the personal impact of abortion is often profound human suffering, with the most serious cases like that of Stacy Zally and telling lies full of potential, needlessly ending long before they should. Continued denial and distortion of the literature by abortion clinic personnel, 
the media, and professional organizations leaves hundreds of, and thousands of women untreated like Stacy. Each day, a significant number similarly find the shame, loss, and depression of abortion simply incompatible with life. And I just would like to add one more tidbit. Bit. I left some um, handouts. There was criticism of the meta-analysis, the, the paper published in the British Journal of Psychiatry, lots of letters, and I, the editors allowed me to write a rebuttal, um, and Clark Forsyth had asked me to go over the criticism. I knew in 15 minutes I would never get to that. So I copied, made copies of the letter, the rebuttal, um, if you, and there are plenty of them back there, and I also um, had a, like a two-page um, data sheet that um, information sheet that is from the We Care site that covers why this meta-analysis is important and I have some flyers related to We Care as well. So thank you very much.